This is the first video in my Exploring the Southwest series, and we're going to start in White Pocket, which is in the Vermilion Cliffs of Arizona. So let's uh, actually jump here into the map view, uh, and I'm going to kind of illustrate to you what happened. So uh, earlier this year in February 2014, I, uh, I visited this area with two of my friends, and our original plan for each of the days we were there was to try to get access to the wave. Now the wave is um, kind of a controlled area and in order to get there you need to get to the uh, a particular office uh, and it doesn't really matter if you get there super early or right when they open. You just want to be there when they open because they're going to let people in and they will give uh, everyone kind of a lottery number in a way. Uh, and then uh, at a certain time, a specific time, like I think 9.30 in the morning, they start uh, drawing numbers. If I remember correctly, only 10 people are allowed uh, in. And uh, we tried three times and failed three times. And it almost was kind of fortuitous because uh, as a kind of a, you know, a uh, backup plan, we decided to go to uh, White Pocket. So this is the Vermilion Cliffs area. And White Pocket is kind of a uh, not the easiest place to get to, and, and actually, it's kind of good in my opinion. You have to have a four-wheel drive vehicle. We uh, we had a rental car, but we ended up renting another car just for this trip, um, a kind of a, a really souped-up Wrangler, because the trail to get here is totally sand. Um, you're driving on sand, and you really need to make sure that you can get through. So the really amazing thing about White Pocket is that it's covered in this brain rock. You can see it from uh, the earth view here. Um, it just looks like a brain, like the surface of a brain. And it is amazing. I mean, this place is absolutely amazing. I'm already like itching to get back and it's already December now of 2014. So um, for this uh, video, what I want to do is start off first by showing you, you know, this is again, uh, White Pocket. And to scale, this place is gigantic. There is uh, so much to explore uh, around this area, and you can see it just kind of goes on and on, uh, and it is very vast. Uh, and you can, you know, it, the the uh, contours uh, really go up and down, so you have all kinds of dimension and depth. Uh, we shot sunset and sunrise here, uh, and I need to get back here. So let's go back, and I'm going to walk you through kind of how I got my shot. So. I tried a few different things um, to get the, the photo. So there was this um, rock formation here that I wanted to be kind of the, uh, the focal point. And I also liked that there was this tree literally growing out of um, the ground, out of this rock. Um, now, the, I tried, uh, I wasn't sure quite you know, what the optimal uh, composition would be. So the first thing I did was I tried um, this ultra wide angle. Uh, and this was taken with my Sony A7 and actually the Canon 15 millimeter fisheye. And you can see here the way it kind of curves here. Problem is that you get all this kind of empty foreground, even though it's, it's cool. Um, the, my main focal point, again, which is this uh, rock, is way off in the distance and it kind of loses uh, any significance. Uh, so then I did the opposite thing. I uh, put on a, my telephoto and I tried to fill the frame with it. And it is cool, uh, I like it, but it's, you miss a lot of that foreground, which is what was really uh, also cool to the, to the photo. And so I compromised and split the difference with this um, photo here. And uh, this is basically um, the telephoto shot. And what I did was um, I took, I bracketed it, but I don't really need to bracket. Um, actually, I bracketed it because I was gonna do a tone mapped HDR image, but uh, I can, get everything I need out of this single exposure. So this is the shot and you can see here, the reason why I like it is uh, you have still the this uh, rock structure here is really nice. And you also have uh, these kind of leading lines that draw you right to it uh, with the foreground. And so it all kind of works together. So here's what we're gonna do. This is how we're gonna work on the image. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is let's go to the develop module. And again, uh, if you look at the histogram here, uh, there is plenty of information uh, the Sony A7 is a 24 mega, has a 24 megapixel sensor and uh, tons of dynamic range. So uh, what we're going to do is, uh, first thing I'm going to do, a few things. I'm going to take my white balance and I'm going to put it over here on one of these kind of neutral areas to get a custom white balance. And you can see it really didn't do much, so uh, that's good. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go all the way to the bottom 
and under the lens correction profile, I'm going to click on the profile tab and then select enable profile correction. Now in this case here, I'm going to select what I was using was a Canon 2470 millimeter lens. Uh, the Sony 24 millimeter had not been released yet. So I'm going to go here. It was the 24 to 70 uh, Mark II, which is right here. So I'm going to select that, and that's going to give me my lens correction profile. Uh, if the metadata uh, has the lens information built in, um, then when you select this checkbox, it'll automatically select the lens. Uh, but in this case, because the adapter I was using, I guess, didn't send over that XF information, it's not a problem. All right, so we have this uh, photo here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is just to see what the image will look like globally, I'm going to uh, bring down the exposure. And you can see how we're getting that information in the sky, which is great. Uh, and I'm going to kind of keep this like this. I'm essentially now processing for the sky. Now, if I look at the histogram, I see that I am blowing out some highlights here, and I could tell they're right there in the clouds. Um, and I'm also clipping some shadows, which is fine. Um, first thing I'm going to do is address the highlights. So the way that I like to fix highlights is you've got the highlight slider uh, under the basic panel. I'm going to press and hold the Option key on the Mac or the Alt key on a PC. And if I hold onto the slider, you can see uh, most of the image turns black, but uh, there is an area that's white. So here, anything that's white is an area that has blown out highlights. And you see, if I bring it out to the right here, we're blowing out more of those highlights. But if I bring it to the left, uh, we start restoring some of that data. And so there we go. We've now fixed the, that information right there. Now, um, I've done a good job of bringing out detail in the sky. I might actually bring the brightness down just a bit more. Uh, and we're going to deal with the sky now uh, separately. But first, what I want to do is fix the foreground. So to, to adjust the foreground, what I'm going to do is go to the adjustment brush. And I'm going to start by selecting the primary function that I want to adjust. And in this case, it's going to be exposure. So I'll start somewhere kind of strong. And the reason why I'm doing that is because it'll help me visualize uh, where I'm drawing. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do here is I'm also going to increase a little bit of contrast uh, and increase uh, shadow recovery. So I want to bring out some of the shadows because remember we had some uh, clipped shadows right over here. Uh, and that's good for now. Uh, actually, no, I'll bring out a little bit of uh, clarity, but that's it. So the other thing I want to do is I'm going to select the auto mask checkbox right here. And what that's going to do is um, the, you see the little uh, target in the middle of the brush. Anything that um, whatever color that the brush is on, uh, Lightroom is going to source that color and it's only going to apply the changes to that color range. So if I, you know, I'm drawing and I go towards here, which is a different color, or as I approach the edge, it's going to prevent the uh, adjustment from bleeding over into the sky, which is great. So let's go ahead here. I'm going to start by uh, increasing the size of the brush. And I'm also going to drop the feather here. Let's make it so you can see it a little bit easier. All right, so here we go. Nice big brush size, small feather. And I'm going to just start drawing uh, all throughout this area here. And you can see how as, as I approach the edge, it's actually not touching um, the sky, which is what I want. And so we'll go here and then through the middle. Now, when I do, uh, when I make a large kind of uh, brush stroke like this, what I like to do is actually go to the bottom here where it says uh, show selected mask overlay. And that kind of puts this colored overlay over my selection. And you can see again, very clean uh, mask. Um, I have some areas here that I need to kind of draw out. What you want is, um, it's not totally critical, but you want the entire area to have this uh, color overlay on it. And the reason why there's some areas here is because the colors are so different. So again, the auto mask is doing its job uh, really nicely. I'm also gonna, let's drop the brush size here. Let's make sure we have the top of this area. There we go, uh, a little bit there. and. Uh, we're good. We have our selection for the most part. So I'll turn off the mask. And what we can do now is start further refining this area. So here you have the little pip. Um, this shows you the active selection if you if you hover over it. And now anything we do, any changes we make uh, will be applied only to the selection. So let's bring the brightness up a bit more. Uh, and then we're going to I'm actually going to take even though I set a custom white balance, I'm going to warm this up. And to do that, I'm just going to bring the temperature slider over to the right. And you can see how it's adding a nice kind of warmth to the image. 
I'm also going to increase the saturation as well. All right, so we've got the foreground pretty much done. I'm, I'm happy with what I'm seeing here. Uh, let's go ahead and deal with the sky. So I'm going to go ahead and select new up here in the right with the adjustment brush. And what that's going to do is it's going to start over my uh, a new brush for me to make a new selection. I'm going to go back. Now watch. You see here how I have all of these settings uh, that I applied to the foreground selection. If I go back and select a new filter, so in this case I'm going to again filter by exposure, it resets everything except for exposure. So it's a, an easy way to kind of get that going. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, increase the exposure just a bit and I'm going to increase the saturation because I really want uh, the sky, especially this blue area, to be saturated. I'm also going to increase the contrast to bring out the clouds. So let's bring out uh, a large brush. Let's go ahead here and just kind of draw through the sky again. Oh, actually, I forgot to turn off, uh, turn on auto mask. So I'm going to turn that on. Um, let me go ahead and see if this bled over anywhere. And it did. So this is actually a good opportunity for me to show you something else. Um, because I did not have auto mask on, uh, basically the adjustment, the brush adjustment is going to apply everywhere. Um, so I was approaching the edges here and you can see uh, that the bottom part of the brush uh, actually spilled onto the foreground, which I don't want. So if that happens for whatever reason, all you need to do is select the erase mode. And that's going to change your brush to erase. Now for erase, I'm going to bring um, the uh, feather, I'm going to make it really small. And I'll increase the brush size a bit. And I'm just going to go towards the edges here. You want to turn auto mask on as well. Um, and so what it's doing is it's removing uh, that brush selection that is kind of custom for the sky. All right. So we're good there. Let's go ahead and select uh, brush A, which is the brush we were using. We have auto mask turned on, uh, and let's uh, kind of resume. I'll turn off the, uh, the mask because we don't need it right now. Uh, and I'm just going to go through here. You can see how we're kind of bringing out some really nice detail in the sky. Uh, the blue is really popping, which is great. Okay, so let's turn the mask on and see if we missed any areas. I uh, got some here that we want to fill in. Uh, right there is looking good. Okay, so we now have two separate selections. And it's interesting because, in a way, um, Lightroom doesn't support masking. But if you have kind of separate areas that you want to uh, address separately, um, the adjustment brush kind of gives you that pseudo masking feel. Uh, so here we are. What I'm going to do just to start is I'm going to hit the backslash key, which is usually found uh, over the enter or return key. And that's going to show you the before and after. So this is what we've started with so far. And uh, this is what we've got just straight up using adjustment brushes and some basic sliders. So it's pretty cool. We've made some really nice uh, adjustments. The, the image is starting to come together. But what I really want to do is draw the eye kind of uh, diagonally through uh, the frame. So from here, you see you have this nice path going up here. The way I'm going to do that is use by using a radial filter. So the radial, radial filter is right to the left of the adjustment brush. I'm going to select it. I'm going to start with just selecting exposure and bringing it up a bit. And what I will do is just draw kind of a, a kind of a ovular shape. So here's my uh, radial selection. What I want to do is I'm actually going to uh, rotate it uh, diagonally. So if you put the cursor kind of around the edges of the radial filter, you'll see the cursor turns into this um, kind of like a two arrows bending. And that allows me to rotate. So I'm just going to make it kind of diagonal over here. I'm going to position it in the center, more or less that it's covering the area that I want um, to, you know, basically adjust. Now, anything I do with these sliders basically will adjust um, or will affect everything outside of the selection. So watch, I've got the exposure slider up, but what I want to do is actually darken that. So I'm going to bring the exposure slider down just a bit. And you can see how it's darkening everything outside of um, the selection. And if I adjust the feather, which I want to do, watch just to illustrate, if I bring the feather to zero you, and I let me press H to hide the selection, you can see here, um, without a feather, you have this really hard edge. I'm going to keep the selection hidden. Uh, I usually always hide the selection uh, when I'm adjusting the feather because it lets me see it easier. I'm going to bring the feather up, and you can see how it's kind of creating this really nice gradual uh, change. All right, so uh, we've darkened that area here. 
And what I want to do is now brighten the middle. So how do I do that? Because anything I do now will affect uh, everything outside of, of this selection here. To do that, I'm going to select New. And I'm going to make another selection. Um, again, I'm just going to make this very loose selection here. I'm going to bring it to the same area. Let me actually first bring it over here and rotate it. I'm also going to make it a little bit narrower and put it over here. OK, so again, anything I do right now is still going to affect the outside part of that selection, which I don't want. I want the um, adjustments to affect inside. To do that, all I need to do is select the Invert Mask checkbox. And now everything that I do is going to only affect inside this checkbox, or inside the selection, rather. So let's adjust the positioning of the radial filter. And I don't need it this bright. I'm going to bring it down just a bit. I'm also going to bring out the shadows of this area uh, and increase the clarity so it really kind of stands out. Now, the outside's looking a bit too dark for me, so all I need to do is select the other radial filter. You can see how the selection changes. I'm going to increase the brightness just a bit. It's a bit too dark, like I said, and I'm going to increase the shadow recovery. OK, so we now have this kind of, let me press H to hide it. We have this nice kind of selection over here. The other thing I want to do is really accentuate um, these ridges, these brighter ridges. And so to do that, I'm going to go back to my adjustment brush. I'm going to select Exposure. I'm going to start drawing uh, on these areas here. Now, because I have Auto Mask on, it's going to sense the uh, selection here. Now, let me turn off the mask because it's making it hard to see. So I'm just drawing here, right through here. I'm also going to make a selection down here on this ridge. And I'm not too worried about you know um, being overly precise with the selection because uh, when you start just to look at the image, um, it all blends in really nicely. So we've got these areas here um, that are selected. And what I want to do is now I can adjust the, the actual setting. The, the selection, when you start drawing, all that's doing is making your selection. Uh, you can now go back and adjust it however you want. So here I'm going to make it, I like it really bright. Um, it really helps draw the eye over here. Um, you have these three kind of directional lines pointing right to the my subject, which is this rock over here. And by darkening uh, this area, it kind of ta it reduces any sort of uh, confusion, visual confusion for the viewer. So uh, that was good. I'm going to go ahead and also increase the clarity a bit. Uh, to add a little bit of texture. It really makes things pop. Now, in making all of these adjustments, you can see that I really started to uh, blow out some more highlights. So I'll, I'm going to go back to my highlight slider. I'm going to press and hold the Option key or the Alt, alt key to see what happened. And you can see uh, the radio filter ended up blowing out some of those highlights. So I'm going to bring that highlight slider back a bit and try to recover some of those highlights. I'm not too concerned about getting uh, all of it back. It's really OK. But it did a really nice job of, of salvaging those highlights here. I can see right here it's a little blown out. And if it really bothers me, I can actually bring the white slider over and bring the highlight slider a bit. But it's really not that bad. It's not that noticeable. Uh, and I'm happy with it. All right. So now we are going to go ahead and do some global adjustments. Uh, to start, I'm going to add some global clarity uh, to the entire image. Uh, and I'm also going to increase the vibrance. Which adds, uh, which adds a color boost without um, totally saturating specific colors. I'm going to go further down here. I'm going to see what it looks like if I adjust the, the tone curve, uh, which by default is linear, to a medium contrast. And I actually like that a lot. What it does is it adjusts um, the, this, the tone curve here, and adjusts the black point and the white point, um, and adds a little bit of this nice contrast. Uh, it's really nice. And again, let's, let's just turn it back to linear so you can see. So you can see how you lose a little bit of that contrast. But this is good. Really happy with, with what that looks like. Um, and we'll move down here. So now we have our hue, saturation, and luminance sliders. I really just want to focus on the blue over here. I'm going to select the target adjustment tool, which is right here. Anywhere that I hover over, I can adjust the saturation or the hue or the luminance of um, that color. So look, look over here. Um, on these color sliders as I go around the image. You see how it's changing colors? 
it's basically sampling whatever color the target adjustment uh, tool falls on. So I'm going to put it over blue, and I'm going to start dragging upward uh, somewhere around here. And that's going to increase the saturation of the blue. I'm also going to go to the luminance and brighten the blue up a bit because it's a bit too dark. And you can sample from different areas. So that's kind of brightening the sky up a bit. And when I'm done, I'm going to select it again to park it. Go further down here. Now I'm going to adjust the sharpening. So for the sharpening, I'm just going to zoom in on an area here. Uh, and I'm going to press and hold the Option key uh, while I'm selecting the Amount slider. So press and hold the Option key or the Alt key. And when you click, you're going to see that the image turns black and white. Now, the, there are two things here. One, uh, I typically like to uh, sharpen when I'm at a one-to-one -one view. Uh, and by zooming in, I got that. And then the reason why I'm pressing and holding the Option key to turn the image uh, grayscale is because it's easier to see uh, the effect of sharpening when the image is grayscale. So as I bring it out, you can see how we're starting to get a little bit more definition in the image. You want to uh, really kind of avoid going too far because you're going to start over sharpening and seeing artifacts. Now, with Lightroom, um, sharpening is done globally, which I don't want. I don't really want sharpening in the sky. So I'm going to go to the masking slider here. And what the masking slider does is it allows you to, it'll automatically remove sharpening from areas that don't have a lot of definition. And to visualize that, I'm going to press and hold the Option key again, and I'm going to uh, select the masking slider. And as I start going to the right, you can see uh, any area that's turning black, uh, Lightroom is removing sharpening from, so mostly in the sky because there is no definition. But as I go further to the right, Lightroom gets more aggressive. And I'm OK with that because I really just want the edges uh, to, to have uh, kind of the sharpening. So there we've got you know really nice sharpening applied to the image. What I'm going to do is, um, now that I'm looking at the overall composition, I'm going to crop it a bit. So uh, I'm going to go to the crop module here. And really what I'm not uh, a fan of is this dead corner here. So from uh, I'm going to make sure I have the lock selected, which constrains proportions. Because watch, if I don't, um, I can you know kind of free crop, which is what I don't want. I'm going to select lock. That's going to maintain proportions. And I'm going to drag from the bottom left right around here. OK, so that kind of, uh, I like this composition better. It, it brings this uh, rock here more to the foreground. Uh, these lines are more prominent uh, and over just works really well. So um, the last thing, and again, so this is actually how I edit photos. Uh, n there's never really kind of a linear progress. There's a lot of times I'll go back and forth uh, with things. I'm not a fan too much of this area being too, so dark. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a new selection with the adjustment brush. Uh, I'm going to have a very mild uh, increase in exposure, but I'm going to bring out a lot of the shadows and kind of bring out some detail here. OK, that, that definitely looks better. Uh, now you see these different dots here. These are the each of the adjustment brush selections that I made. Uh, if you don't want to see them when you're working, you just press the H key, and it'll hide them. Uh, and if you press it again, it'll bring them back. So that's just a little thing there. All right, so I think uh, I'm ready to call this good. I might actually add a little bit of a vignette. Uh, so I'm going to go to the post crop vignette uh, panel. I'm going to bring down uh, the brightness, or the amount rather, so I'm darkening the edges. I'm also going to increase the feather very heavily. So that's going to uh, add a nice transition to the image. And so we're starting to get this really nice kind of, again, focus towards the center of the frame. And uh, let's just go ahead again and look at the before and the after. So uh, pressing the backslash key, here's what we started with uh, before any of the adjustments. Um, again, it, it goes to show that learning your camera, learning the capabilities of your camera, specifically the dynamic range uh, that it can capture in a single exposure, um, is really great. I um, as I've grown as a photographer, I've, I've start, started to appreciate being able to wrangle in tonality, so wrangling in the dark parts and the bright parts of an image from a single exposure instead of having to go through a very aggressive tone mapping. You know, tone mapping is, a, is one of those things where um, it's becoming more and more of a, of a last resort for me um, because, look, here you can, at, first, at face value and at first glance, you can see it's, it's really bright. Um, 
the sky is looks almost white and everything looks washed out. But the key is to look at your histogram. You know, the histogram shows you the actual data, the information of the image, and there is a lot of data there. So we're able to do this from that image. I mean, it's pretty awesome uh, just from a single photo. So this wraps up uh, the first image of our Exploring Southwest video series. Uh, let's move on to video number two.